Hello on Full Person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a pretty cool discovery of something else about our own oceans that we didn't really know before. Specifically, a completely new carbon cycle that seems to exist in the oceans that we never knew existed or never even knew was possible. Something that also helps us answer how oceans on our planet can actually maintain themselves and to some extent how they can clean things like, for example, oil spills. So let's discuss this in a little bit more detail because the discovery does have some profound implications, but it also shows us how little we really know about our oceans. But let's start with something a little bit more negative this time. Oil spills. When a typical oil spill occurs somewhere in the oceans, most of the resulting damage is usually done to animals that are, well, larger. For example, birds, furred mammals, or some types of fish. But generally, these large oil spills tend to disappear within only a few months, possibly maximum a year after the original event. And what scientists were always kind of shocked about is how quickly the biomass in this particular region gets kind of reshuffled and rebalanced and how certain bacteria and certain algae become the dominant species in the area. And so even though certain animals that are used to certain conditions are definitely affected by this, smaller things, specifically things from the world of microbiology, seem to actually prosper in these conditions. And certain bacteria such as Alcanivorex have even started to be used in assisting certain cleanups because they're so effective at breaking down all of the material present in a typical oil spill. And so generally any kind of an oil spill is usually followed by a huge bloom of different types of bacteria and algae in a certain region. But naturally all of these bacteria don't just depend on oil to survive. They must have some sort of other cycle they're part of and probably consume a lot of other hydrocarbons coming from somewhere else. And the scientists whose paper you can find in the description below wanted to find out more about these unusual cycles that might exist in our oceans and also just find out how these bacteria interact with the rest of the oceans. But to their surprise, they've actually discovered something completely different. A completely new carbon cycle that nobody else knew existed. A cycle that relates to this molecule you see on the screen, known as pentadecane. A molecule that we basically know very little about. Except for the fact that, well, it seems to be part of certain animals and certain plants, and it seems to do something in the metabolism of those animals and plants. And everything else for now is a big mystery. And a few years ago, scientists actually discovered that this particular compound was also actively produced by bacteria living in the oceans. Something that they couldn't really explain right away, but something that they wanted to investigate as well. And to try to investigate all of this, the scientists had to go on a relatively long ocean trip to try to find a spot somewhere in the oceans that wasn't really polluted with artificial pollutants. And they found several such spots in the North Atlantic, they also took some samples from the Gulf of Mexico, and also made sure that everything was done extremely carefully, for example making sure that the ship was positioned in a very specific way so that the pollutants brought by the wind or by the currents weren't really contaminating the samples, also no one was allowed to cook, to paint anything, to smoke, no one was allowed to do anything that could contaminate the samples produced in this study. So as you can probably imagine, it was not a particularly joyful ride for certain people. But in the end, when the samples were collected and brought back and analyzed, everything seemed to be pretty clear. First of all, the samples were definitely not contaminated. Second of all, they definitely contained unusual compounds such as pentadecane. And what's more is that this had some sort of a cycle going on, with the amount of pentadecane being correlated with the amount of cyanobacteria present in the water. And since cyanobacteria are some of the most prolific producers of different organic matter and are also responsible for producing a lot of oxygen that we breathe as well, it should not really come as a surprise that they also produce certain other hydrocarbons that are used by bacteria in the oceans. Although don't get confused, the cyanobacteria producing these compounds and the bacteria consuming them are totally different from each other. The green stuff here produces the organic molecules using sunlight and essentially are photosynthesizing all of these compounds using the carbon dioxide, water and the sunlight. Whereas certain other bacteria and certain other archaea are then responsible for essentially consuming all of this and most likely releasing the CO2 back into the oceans as well. And the amounts used and produced here are actually quite staggering. The scientists here mentioned that the total mass of these compounds produced is probably around 500 times more than all of the compounds released into the waters through artificial means, for example petroleum spills or just natural seeps from the ocean floor itself where the bacteria most likely uses these compounds as well. And the total production is up to about 600 million metric tons 
of hydrocarbons produced every single year. And the way that the scientists currently think the pentadecane is used in bacteria is by allowing certain bacteria with very curved shapes to basically kind of build a structure for the cell so it doesn't break apart. And at least one study in the last few years investigated the presence of these hydrocarbons as essentially the potential source for the formation of cell membrane of various bacteria. And since the cycle here definitely correlated with the presence of cyanobacteria in the water, and since the pentadecane discovered in these samples were also confirmed to be biological in nature, there is very little to doubt that the cyanobacteria and the bacteria present in the water definitely have some sort of a relationship going on with one producing the compound and the other one consuming it. And it wasn't just one or two bacteria, there were at least a dozen different organisms identified that seemed to be thriving in these conditions, which also presented it to the next question here. Does it also mean that these particular bacteria would be responsible for these cleanup activities that we usually see around a typical oil spill in the oceans? Because normally these are followed by various blooms of bacteria of all sorts. And this is of course where the scientists were actually shocked to discover that the bacteria captured from the samples that essentially relied on pentadecane did not care much for oil or any kind of petroleum spills. In other words, unlike the assumption here that they're going to bloom in these conditions when there's a lot of various types of hydrocarbons coming from oil spills, which would of course help us explain how the oil spill cleanup happens and how carbon circulates in the oceans, the scientists found something completely different. They discovered that pentadecane seems to have its own cycle dependent on its own bacteria that do not care for oil or for any petroleum products. And so the original assumption where the scientists thought that there is a short cycle with cyanobacteria and bacteria circulating together, producing and consuming various types of hydrocarbons, was not at all related to the other cycle, long cycle, that usually depends on all sorts of oil formation, which of course includes oil spills, but it also includes natural production of oil from within the soil, which was further reinforced with DNA tests that suggested that the bacteria in the pentadecane study and the bacteria in oil spills produce completely different proteins responsible for breaking down these uh, hydrocarbons. And this of course implies that this newly discovered hydrocarbon cycle is something we know absolutely nothing about, mostly because we have very little information about the molecule, about the organisms involved in this cycle, even though it's like millions and millions of tons of it that seems to circulate the planet pretty much every year. And this of course means several things. First of all, there seems to be an organism that seems to thrive on whatever you put in the water. Not everything of course, but in most cases, no matter what actually happens in the oceans long term, there's always going to be some sort of a bloom where a certain bacterium or a certain organism is going to start using it as their primary source and thus become the dominant organism, at least for the time being. But this also usually leads to a tremendous change in the biosphere of a certain region and can actually damage certain regions permanently. At the same time, all this also implies that there are a lot of different cycles in the oceans and we know so little about them. Our primitive understanding of the so-called carbon cycle usually involves the circulation of carbon dioxide and various chemical reactions related to it. But that's a very old and a somewhat primitive approach. Today we know that there are a lot more really really complex cycles going on everywhere around us, but it's also really important for us to get acquainted with these cycles and to try to understand how all of this interacts on the planet and how all of this influences organisms around us. We know that the typical oil spill usually throws everything out of balance, but then balance returns and things generally go back to normal. So there are a lot of feedback mechanisms and a lot of different mechanisms going on in the oceans that we actually have to understand a little bit better. But even though in the long term we know that the oceans are going to adapt to whatever is thrown at them, so even if there's a major catastrophe and sort of a major condition change where the oceans become completely different from what they are now, the organisms are still going to adapt. The problem is everything else that depends on those oceans, including the larger organisms like birds, mammals, and of course us, are unfortunately not going to be able to adapt to this and most likely perish just like it happened so many times in history. And that's of course why it's super important for us to study our oceans and to learn to understand what happens in them and also to learn more about these various cycles going on in there because we naturally started to influence them as well. And that's something that we need to learn more about before we really screw up to the point of no return. It's not going to affect bacteria, but it's definitely going to affect us.
But anyway, on that note, well, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. It's a pretty exciting discovery, but because we know so little about these cycles, there's really nothing else we can talk about right now. Once we find out more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video, but until then, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and subscribing if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful Patreon t-shirt you can find in the description. I'll see you tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye.